Uh, and continuing uh, here today, uh, I want to tell you about SupernaturalSilver.com. Don't let cold and flu season catch you off guard. Keep your family safe this year with Supernatural Silver. This patented new technology is scientifically supported and extremely safe. You check out all their information on their site. It's incredible. Boost your immune system, avoid germs, and be prepared for any emergency with Supernatural Silver. Go to SupernaturalSilver.com to take care of yourself and your loved ones. That's SupernaturalSilver.com. Look at all the studies when the antibiotics and drugs stop working. Silver is certainly something that has a great effect in many cases. Just find out more, SupernaturalSilver.com. Okay, uh, joining us for the balance of the hour is Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. He is the former head of policy, Department of Treasury. He is uh, the father of Reaganomics. Uh, he has uh, been listed by many publications, one of the top ten living economists out there. He's the former, uh, I mentioned Wall Street Journal editor. Uh, also, uh, he's a syndicated columnist, and his stuff appears at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And he predicted pretty much what's happening now, that it'd be a slow, long slide with currency wars going on, and that nothing could ever be fixed because we've been deindustrialized. And that's the real issue, why you get college degrees and it's not worth it because there's not the jobs. Uh, you know, so I wanted to get him on to talk about the, the, the debt crisis. They, they, they want trillions for 100 billion grisos. Now Italy's going down. What gold and silver are doing? Where all of this is going? I mean, you said three, four years ago on the show it'd take three, four years to really, really start getting really bad if they didn't turn it around. Well, here we are three, four years later. What's your prognosis now, sir? Well, they haven't learned anything, have they, Alex? No. <laughs> and so it, it's continuing to uh, spiral out of control. Uh, it, you know, the main problem, I think, for the Europeans, is that the European Union, the centralizers, are trying to use the crisis in order to uh, curtail the sovereignty of the individual countries. So they were using the Greek crisis uh, to take away the uh, ability of the Greek government to decide its taxes, its spending, its budget. And this is part of the creation of the European super state. And they were saying that the fact that the individual countries uh, were not financially responsible was uh, proof that they had to centralize the uh, decisions of, uh, of uh, spending and taxing in Greece and Italy and elsewhere in Brussels with the European Union bureaucracy. So that's one of the problems. It was being used to create the super state. Another Another way it's being used, Alex, is to establish the principle that the taxpayers have to bail out the big banks. And uh, so <clears throat> this produced a policy that made no sense from the standpoint of the ability of the uh, indebted countries to survive or pay the debt. So we saw all the riots, you know, in Greece. And they were becoming quite violent uh, with the people throwing Molotov cocktails at the police, and the Greek employment collapsed. They, they have an official number like us, and our official number is 9%, which is a farce, and their official number is 16%, uh, about double. But the real rate of unemployment in Greece is about 25%. The youth that are educated uh, are leaving the country, uh, there seems to be some migration from cities back to towns to the countryside. Uh, retail trade seems to be collapsing. And so they've created the situation in which the Greek, Greeks uh, have uh, $465 billion in, in debt, and there's no economy to, to pay it. So, and now it seems to be spreading to Italy. So I think that uh, that they'll continue with their folly, and uh, it's all falling back on the Germans. How much are they willing to pay to bail out? Or the European Central Bank will have to do what the Federal Reserve did and just print the money to bail it all out. And that, of course, has the inflation risk. 
And so there doesn't seem to be a solution uh, given the agendas that are in place. Now, Dr. Roberts, you've hit the nail on the head as usual here, but I know you must watch financial news. I mean, you're an economist. You're always up on it. But I've heard Bloomberg. I've, I've seen MSNBC, CNBC in the last month go, it's bad uh, that uh, Germany is might be able to vote out of this. We need to take over these countries and have EU enforcers in them. And they never mention that most of this is derivatives and garbage and th that it's the very central planners that set all this up that are now saying, give us more power to fix it. And every time they get more power, we learn it's 10 times worse or 20 times worse. Uh, so it's just crazy. It's a huge power grab with the Vatican calling for world government. And you know, that'll punish the bankers, give them even more power. Where do you see this going? Well, I, I think that when uh, their agendas don't make any sense and they can't reach uh, a solution, you know, the Germans are, are frightened to death of inflation because of the rise of Hitler and all of that horror that they went through. And so they won't be very receptive to the European Central Bank printing the money to bail out Greece. Sure, sure. But, Doctor, uh, uh, speak up for us a little bit because your phone's a little bit hazy. How can our media now openly say they want to put microphones in all the street lamps listening to us? And, <laughs> and, and now TSA's announced, as I'm sure you know, checkpoints all over the country, jerking families out of their cars. It's now happening, including to us. Uh, how can this be? And then, and then they're on the news saying the problem is Europeans might vote their way out of this. We've got to get rid of freedom. I mean, they're really bringing this out in the open right now. Yes, that's true. Uh, that's exactly true. As I said, they're using they're using the Greek crisis uh, to destroy the sovereignty of the individual members of the European Union. And of course, we have a we have a police state here. Uh, you know what may well ha you know if, what may happen if there's any intelligence in Germany is they simply exit the EU and form an alliance with Russia because the Germans don't want the inflation they don't want the debt they're financially responsible uh, Russia has massive resources that fit very well with German industry and you would you would have a real powerhouse there and the German Russian economic alliance would of course uh, bust up NATO and make it harder for the United States to run around causing new wars of aggression everywhere. By the way, that was something the British were always scared to death of. That would be a new power axis. How would NATO try to block that? Because if if, if the Germans could kick the NATO agents out, not that I even like the Russians, you know, the, these systems are all corrupt. It's just this hegemonic power of the Rothschild banking system uh, and, and the Rockefeller system has got to be defeated. Uh, and, and, and so that's a great idea for the German people with their military and everything. Why not make an economic deal with Russia? Yes, that's, that's the way out for Germany. And <clears throat> I think probably some of them think about that. Uh, in the back of their minds, they probably are very reluctant to make such a fundamental break with the United States. Uh, but I don't think the Germans are happy with the prospect of inflation, and I don't think they're happy with the prospect of losing their own sovereignty to the European Union. Because what they've seen with the European Union is debts out of control, uh, banks are in control, and the and the way out is to print money, and that's not anything that Germany is happy with. So and by the way, as you know, sir, they would leave. Sure, sure. Germany has already snuggled up to Russia, and Russia vice versa in all sorts of uh, manufacturing and energy deals. Yes, <clears throat> right. So. But if they don't, if the Germans stay in, then they'll face the same kind of pressures to have interference in their uh, budget policy, their taxing and spending. Uh, <clears throat> they'll be expected to somehow guarantee some of the bailout money. And as they are part of the euro, if the European Central Bank prints euros to buy up the debt to save the private banks, then 
Germany will be subject to the same inflation. So it's a lose-lose game for the Germans. Uh, saving Europe means worse for Germany. So I don't know whether they'll pay that price or not. I really have no idea. Uh, Dr. Roberts, studying this police state, it's it's if I was going to write a Kurt Vonnegut absurdist book about a clownish police state so over the top that it had to be satire, I would do what this ruling class is doing. I mean, usually tyrants try to hide it or have excuses. In this case, it's just naked. Uh, I've studied psychological warfare manuals that have been declassified from the 60s and 70s. They want to win the hearts and minds during a domestic takeover. Instead, now, it's like they want to make us angry. They want to to act like bad guys. And, and I guess for their morale, it might be fun to dress up in black outfits with black helmets and strut around. But in my experience, it's not intimidating most people. It's actually waking up folks that were on the fence, and it's driving others into basically arms buildups. Uh, and, and, uh, I don't, I, I think the hubris filled people running things do not have any idea what they've turned loose because it's actually scaring me. I'm not some macho guy that wants to see some giant uprising and war on the streets, or maybe that's what they want, but I don't think it's going to go the way they want because I've seen these government bureaucrats and they're enforcers. They're a bunch of wimps. They're real tough when they've got some old man surrounded who hadn't paid his property tax and 20 SWAT team guys shoot him and kill him. But they're not going to be too tough when all hell breaks loose. And I think most of them are going to run off and hide. I want to get your take on that and where you see America going. Because you've tried to give people good ideas of how to turn the course. But is it too late to turn it around? And where are we going? Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, economic prognosis straight ahead. We got him on a bit late. We'll see if it'll be five minutes of overdrive. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Do you know which 37 crucial food items are going to fly off the shelves when the next disaster hits? If you don't, you and your family may be without food and waiting in long food lines after a big disaster strikes. You would be surprised how many people don't have these food items right now. 123survivalplan.com has set up a For Patriots Only video with inside information on the 37 food items that will sell out first when the next disaster strikes. The video on 123survivalplan.com has crucial information you and your family need to prepare for any disaster, natural or man-made. And you won't have to be afraid of going hungry or being sent to a FEMA refugee camp. See the video that over one million other smart patriots have already seen in the last four months. Prepared now. Go to 123survivalplan.com and learn which 37 food items you should hoard. 